Hello Rogue fans, this is Darren Gray, uh, I'm doing a little recording of Brogue, a bit like a let's play but more of a let's die. Uh, this is actually going to be my first ever game of Brogue, which the, the game recorded automatically itself and I'm re-watching it with commentary on what silly things I was doing. Uh, for those who don't know, Brogue is a roguelike. It's somewhat traditional in style, but it has a lot of very modern design elements. Um, in fact, it really got some great design elements in the game. A lot of thought being put into every part of it. So, let's hop right in, I'll explain a bit as we go for those that haven't seen. We're going to this recording here, which was on the 23rd of July, the earliest game of Brogue I've had. Uh, by comparison, uh, 4th of August was when I first managed to get the amulet of Yendor, which is the target of the game. Uh, but then I also died, which tends to happen to me. So, this is Brogue. Now, if you can see, it's got a kind of ASCII interface here. You play as an at. Uh, this item here is a ring. Uh, this item here is some gold. This is some grass around and things. So, uh, it looks like a traditional roguelike in many ways, but you might notice a few differences from very traditional roguelikes in that you've got quite a lot of colours going on here. And as you can see, they're animating just as a a subtle little effect there that has no gameplay element to it it's just there to look pretty and Brogue does try to look pretty with just this basic ASCII and colours um, sorry not ASCII, ANSI bit of a technicality difference there also I, I have mouse control here I can move my mouse around and I can see that that's gold and you get this little pop-up in oh I can't highlight on the pop-up whilst also highlighting with the mouse you get what I'm saying if I hover over the ring, it tells me some information about the ring. Um, if I press I to go to my inventory, I've got here, I can see I've, if I click on dagger, it gives me a description of the dagger. It's a plus zero dagger, it's not enchanted. Twelve is its strength and requirement. I don't know what the B means. Um, it has no intrinsic enchantment, um, and it tells me the, the sort of the detail of what's so special about a dagger. A dagger will give extra damage in sneak attacks. My leather armor similarly gives me some basic information. Uh, I've got food and I've got some darts that I'll be able to throw whilst I'm going around. Um, it's quite nice this, the, the ability to to click on anything and get some very detailed information about it. And as you'll see later, you get a lot more detailed information about a lot of things. Brogue tries its best not to be reliant on spoilers. Uh, going back to the rest of the interface, Brogue tries to be really slick and it considers the UI in all elements uh, of design. So you have very basic stats. You have a strength stat, uh, which is pretty much your only stat. You've got health, which you can increase over the course of the game. You've got armor, which depends purely on what you're wearing. And your stealth range also depends purely on what you're wearing. So there's a little bit of balance between your armor and your stealth. Uh, these are just showing what you can see around you. So you can see the dungeon exit, the, the items here. Monsters will appear here as well with summaries of their health bars and things so you can have a good overview of everything important in sight at the time. Uh, so we're starting on death 1. The goal of the game is to get to death 26. There's an amulet there it's called the Amulet of Yandor. The idea is get that and get back to the surface. Try to do starve to death, get killed, get fall to your death, get burned alive, drown, anything like that. Try not to do this. Actually I don't think you can drown in the game. Anyway, we're going to start seeing uh, now, when initially trying this, I got confused with the inventory and wielded my darts, but I quickly understood my error and went back to wielding my dagger. So let's go and have a look at this ring. So if we pick that up and now equip that, and if I equip it now, you can see it's in my equipment area, and it tells me that <laughs> I don't know what it does, but it will reveal its secrets of one for 1499 more turns. So it automatically identifies after a certain length of time. Some things identify just from uh, the context. You know, you, you physically see their effects and so it becomes identified to you. Just picked up some gold. Gold is kind of a score in the game. Uh, it's not that important. Let's see, so wander around the environment here. Uh, this, this seems to be like long grass or something. You can kind of move through it and it leaves a, a trail behind. And uh, suddenly I can see through there. Oh. We have our first enemy. The kobold is a lizard-like humanoid of the upper dungeon. The kobold has a 50% chance to hit you, typically hits for 8% of your current health, and at worst could defeat you in 8 hits. 
you have a 100% chance to hit the cobalt. I like that odds. Uh, typically hit 42% of its current health, and at best could hit it could kill it in two turns. So this is nice. It's really transparent. It gives you all these details. As my stats change and as I pick up extra items, it will give me extra information. Um, if it has any special abilities, the, the cobalt has not got any special abilities. It's a very basic monster. But other enemies, it will tell you if they regenerate, if they fly, if they do other interesting things. Um, so we'll go up and we'll bump into the cobalt until he disappears. There we go. Oh. What's this now? The jackal! The jackal prowls the caverns for intruders to rend with his powerful jaws. Rend! Uh, let's see. It moves quickly, um, but otherwise otherwise doesn't seem so bad. So let's see. Get the gold. Move there. Yeah. I caught it unaware. Alright, because it hadn't noticed me. So I managed to get a sneak attack on it and that did extra damage. Let's see. We've got some more leather armor. All right, we've got a backup then for the other leather arm we're already wearing. It might be better or it might be worse than the one we've got. Uh, might be no different. Let's see, what is this thing? You see, you see a blood wart pod. Whenever I hover over something, it gives the, the descriptions here, and even as you're moving about, it gives descriptions of the environment down here. So, blood wart pod. Do I kill it? The Bloodward Seed Pot burst, releasing a cloud of healing spores. Spores? Ew! Healing spores? Uh, maybe they're good. Alright, so this is interesting. It's got this mechanic where you can find these things that will heal you in the dungeon. And they, they actually fill up this area. So as long as you're in this area, you can uh, you can do it. I don't seem to be able to interact with this stalk bit of it. Moving into it does nothing. Um, and then this cloud of gas, this healing spore gas disappears over time, and it affects other people, not just you. So you have to, you can't just use it to magically heal yourself and not expect the enemies to also get healed, right? Uh, one thing to notice is when it shows the enemies here. Oh, that's nice. You can hover over them here to get their information too. It it highlights where they are on the map too when you hover it here. Um, but it shows their health. It's full health bar, and also shows below their status. Uh, currently he's hunting, which means he's noticed me, he's coming right for me. I have every right to kill it. It's self-defense, right? Um, you could also say wandering or sleeping or other things like that, which means it hasn't noticed you and you can get a sneak attack on it. But as for now, I will kill it. Another weird thing, actually, is that you cannot move diagonally around corners. It actually forces blocky ends of walls. Uh, this this is very hard to get used to at first if you're used to other roguelikes. Let's see, I've got a scroll. Scroll entitled Puskerdaba. Ah yes, that magic word. Um so that's my first proper unknown item. Well I suppose go the ring of those. My first consumable item. Um I'm not gonna try and reading it because I have no idea what it does and it could be something bad. You can press uh, capital D in the game to show all of your identified items. It's got the scrolls here potions, staves, wands, rings. Also shows you if they're good or bad, if they show up with positive enchantments or negative enchantments. Generally the negative enchantments are are bad for you. Well, it's a little bit inconsistent with, with some of it. Right, let's carry on exploring around these odd odd square corridor things. It's very difficult to get used to. Just trample all over the grass. Let's see, keep it out of the water. Do, 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 do. Oh, oh, yep, he's dead. Uh, I kind of bumped into him. All right, let's just fast forward along here. Uh, oh, 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 is that a rat? Is that, come here, yep, I got him. Yeah, the rat can swim. Uh, okay, that was blocked. What's up here? Locked iron door. Hello? Okay, that's a that's closed. I think I need a key. It's a locked iron door, it says. So let's go see if I can find a key. I guess I'll go over to this this place up here. Uh, let's see, any other enemies to kill? I like to kill. There's no experience from killing enemies. Oh, yep, here we go. Another cobbled. There's no experience from killing enemies. Um, just satisfaction. Uh, the, the game is entirely without an uh, experience system. It has progression through the items that you find, which you don't need to kill to get them. Well, sometimes you do. Uh, 
but you know, often often running away, especially in the later dungeons, is the better tactic. Right, so um how do we get through here? Aha! You can walk in water in this game. Maybe you can't walk in this darker water. Alright, yep, in out water. Fine. Right, let's go. Oh, another scroll. I find the musical note symbol for scrolls a bit odd. There seems to be a bunch of items in here behind this locked door. Okay, it must be like a treasure room. Uh, oh, there's the downstairs. But I want to find the. Aha! The key to the door of treasure. So if I pick this. Oh! K. Um. Paralytic gas sprays upwards from hidden vents in the floor. A scratching sound emanates from the nearby walls. The nearby wall explodes in a shower of stone fragments. There's a couple of rats there. Oh, oh, ah, uh, oh, lots of things happening. Uh, I am paralyzed. Oh, I was paralyzed. I think time fast forward was as paralyzed. And now I'm surrounded by rats in the walls. Possibly a Lovecraft reference there. All right, if I get myself into a better position, I can deal with these just having one of them at a time because they can't attack through corners around these blocky walls. I can't either. So it's, it leads to some interesting corridor gameplay. All right, I think they're all dead. Oh, maybe not. There's more here. Kill, 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 kill. Let's see, I'm at, at low health. It came, had a oh, had another health warning there. Maybe I should go heal back at the magic tree. Oh wait, I can go in here now, can't I? All right. So let's see. Protection, war axe, wand of empowerment. Let's see, it tells you what they all do, and it even tells you what happens if you enchant them. Enchanting is a special item you can get to improve items you already have. It's a way of kind of progressing your character with the your equipment. Uh, staff of Firebolt. That sounds nice. Staff of Tunneling. Yeah. Ah, right. That's okay. It's not moving into that. Um, can I get this? No. No. What's um. Cages lift off the altars as you approach. Oh, cages lower. Cage lift. Okay. Uh, I think it's only letting me have one item. Oh, that's not as fun. <laughs> Perhaps more balanced, but not as fun. What do I want then? Okay. So a sword sounds good, because I don't really want my silly starting dagger. Staff of fireball sounds good too. Maybe I should get that. Hmm. Oh, hello, rat. Oh, jackal. Right. Maybe, maybe actually the sword would be better. All right, right. Oh. Uh, yeah, it doesn't let me just replace it with a different <laughs> different item. I've got to have the same item back. It obviously tracks that. All right, get over here. The rat. Where am I going? Um right, okay, Jackal's dead. Will there be more of those seeds on that plant, I wonder? Right, it's a little bit unexplored here, so we'll go check it out. I'm at full health now. Uh, we'll have a look up here. Nothing up here. Okay. Okay, I think we are done with this level. First level and broke. How exciting! Do, 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 do. Oh, jackal dead. There is a kind of auto explore button you can use, but it doesn't necessarily uh, cons conserve terms as well as one might like. Let's see if I can sneak. No, I can't sneak up on the jackal. He's just noticed me. Ah. All right. Did I equip that sword? Yes, I did. So the sword will reveal its secrets, as in if it's if it's maybe a special sword or not. If I defeat twenty enemies within total, I've got I've done five so far. So let's kill some more things to 
to reveal that. Oh, rat. Um, I don't need healing. Um, okay, I just hit something there. And defeated it. What is this? Shallow water. A bog. A cloud of explosive gas. I'm going to go away from there. That sounds dirty. Mm. Oh, another scroll. Herba flux grana. Some gold. Oh, and a rat. Die, rat. Let's see. Where to next? Oh. Pounced up on me. Let's see. Oh, another scroll. Hmm. Okay. Anything over here? Nope. Bum, bum, bum. Ah. Reached kind of the limit there. So I need to go over the top here. Right. I like these big caverns that they have. This is a big empty space. You see a chasm. It's nice being able to see across the level, get an idea of how it all kind of fits together, planning out your exploration as you go, rather than a very kind of linear way in a lot of roguelike levels. Alright, let's go over here. Back to where I came in the level. Uh, a bladder of deadly gas. Boys, the bloat through the air. Ew. It's called a bloat, and it's a bladder of gas. Deadly gas, which is the worst type of gas. Um, a bladder of deadly gas boys the bloat through the air. It's thin, venous membrane ready to rupture at the slightest stress. Ooh, okay. I don't want to get it stressed. Uh, the bloat deals no direct damage. Um, the bloat dies when it attacks, flies... And moves erratically. This sounds dangerous. Uh, what should I do? Oh, he's just noticed me. Uh, well, I can throw this at him. Uh, okay, this this must be the, the deadly gas. Um, uh oh, <laughs> I'm running away from it. Uh, uh, oh dear, the whole area seems to be filled up with gas. I wonder if it goes away. No, it's still there. No, it's chasing me. Oh, okay. Um, let's keep doing that. It kind of disappears now. I guess it must kind of dissipate over like wider areas or something. I'll right, go explore here for now. Uh, is this still going to be there? Oh, it seems to have reduced a bit. It's not over there as much. Uh, and again. Yay, it's all gone. All right. We survived our first bloat. It's one thing I quite like is that the the enemies, most of them are actually quite different. They they have, you know, they're, they're not just a collection of numbers. They have very different abilities. You have to use different tactics on them. And it gets interesting, of course, when you have multiple enemies combined in a room and you've got to figure out what the best way to take them all. Oh, you're now familiar with the Akmarine ring. So I've been wearing my ring for a while. And it's identified itself as a plus two ring of regeneration. Um, this ring you'll regenerate all of your health in 170 turns instead of 300. If the ring is enchanted, this will decrease to 128 turns. Okay, so regeneration is always good. I'm happy with that. What have we got here? Plate armor. It's supposed to be the best armor in the game. Unfortunately, it has a. Is that a strength requirement? Uh, I think so. Because I think the the number in square brackets the amount of armor it gives, which I don't know because I don't I haven't identified it. And then this is its strength requirement. So the sword requires fourteen strength. I have twelve strength. And if you wear something without full strength, you you get some penalties. Um, I'm doing the sword because I get some penalties, but the sooner I kill things with it, the better. And I seem to be doing okay with killing things with it, so... Um, if I can sneak up on enemies, I get a, a guaranteed attack on them, which is good. So any any malices on my to-hit roll aren't so bad. Alright, down we go. Depth 3. Oh, isn't this exciting. Uh, oh, come on, rat. Come die. Ooh. A mischievous trickster, a monkey. He's asleep. Uh, 
Mrs. Tricker that it is, the monkey lives to steal shiny trinkets from passing adventurers. Oh, the monkey can steal items. Um, I'm not going to let it do that. There we go. Steal that. Ha <laughs> ha. Right. Okay. I have heard many people. Oh, I just killed whatever that was. Goblin. Um, I have many heard many people moan about monkeys in Broke before, so uh, I don't take any risks. Uh, oh, free health, which I didn't need anyway, but it was in my way. A potion. So my first potion. Now I've got another potion. Don't know what those potions are. It says in the manual that when you come to identifying your potions, stand in. Oh, okay, hang on. It says in the manual when identifying your potion, stand in water when you do it in case one is a potion of incineration. But I have more pressing concerns because this is a pit bloat. This rare subspecies of bloat is filled with a peculiar vapor that, if released, will cause the floor to vanish out from underneath it. Ooh, okay. Um. Well, shall I try and run away and throw darts at it again? There we go. Oh! It makes the bridge disappear. Okay. And it's coming back. Ah! Bit of an odd creature. Alright, should I go over here or up here? Uh, there's nothing there. Right, I'll check it up here in case there's a dead end and I want to go here later. Conserves food better if I'm not having to backtrack so much. Um, the game does require food. I've got a nutrition bar here. It'll tell me when I'm hungry enough, when I'm at the optimum time to actually eat the food that I have. It's another potion. Um, and if you're not careful, you know, if you're not efficient with how you take your turns, then you can end up starving to death. Oh, <laughs> what do you know? You are hungry. Um, that's not a pressing concern. Oh, jackal. So just eating some food. Oh, what's this? An emerald ring. Lovely. And a mango. Ah, okay. So the emerald ring is a ring of clairvoyance. Wearing this ring will permit you to see through nearby walls and doors within the radius determined by the thing. So I don't know what enchantment level it is. It could be a plus two like this other ring. For now, it's going to act like a plus one. Let so me see through walls. So, ah, so I can see through this wall and see that there's another piece of wall there. I'm guessing that just must be the void, I guess. Oh, there's a bit of water there. Okay. Oh, hello, rat. Uh, I can't get across there. Oh, I need to go around. Can I go through here? Seems to no no that's okay must have to go around this way. All right oh yeah I'm seeing through walls it's weird. So it's handy for knowing if there's something on the other side of a door. And nothing there. Do, do, do. Oh kill the cobbled. Ding. I'm kind of scared of the water. Oh, so this goblin. A filthy little primate. Oh, is the monkey not also that? Um, the tribalistic goblin often travels in packs and carries a makeshift stone spear. The goblin attacks up to two opponents in a line and avoids attacking in corridors in a group. Okay, I'm not sure what that means. Oh, familiar with the sword to identify it's a a, a boring sword. It's a sword of boringness. So, oh, okay. So I decided to try a potion there, and it was not a nice one. Uh, run away. Okay. So, hmm. I tried it next to water. Maybe I maybe that wasn't such a good idea. Um, shall I try another, or should I go heal? 
I'll go heal first, I think, because that just burned me up a lot. Alright, let's just go in the water again, try another. Ah! Potion of caustic gas. Run away! Okay, well, that's healthy. So that potion that I tried was a potion of incineration. Oh, I've got another one. A potion of incineration. Uh, it contains an unstable compound that will burst violently into ex flame upon exposure to open air. I can throw the flask at distant enemies uh, or into a deep lake to cleanse the cavern with scalding, scalding steam. So, you can actually be a cleaner in this game if you feel like it. Um, the cost of gas, I presume, is less clean. I presume it needs a bit of steam to get that out of the furniture afterwards. Ooh, detect magic. So feel the presence of magic on the level and in your pack. So I can see uh, it's got little symbols next to things. So that blue one means a positive thing, I guess. And the the, that means negative. So the potion of incineration is a negative item. And yeah, okay. And now I've got a bit of a better idea of which scroll is which. Not, not a perfect idea, but in here, in this kind of scroll screen, you can see that. Well, okay, it doesn't give me that much information, really. Okay, let's take magic. Um, I've got no more potions. I'm not going to try the scrolls because. Uh, oh, what's this? You detect an aura of benevolent magic here. Is this some magic creature or something? It could be a leprechaun or. I don't know if the game has leprechauns. It could be something. Oh, well, that's a cobalt. You're not magical. Come on, who's the magic? A goblin. A goblin conjurer. The goblin conjurer has a jasper ring. So I can see him because he's carrying around a magic ring. The goblin can summon allies, attacks up to two opponents in a line, avoids corridors in a group, and keeps its distance. Hmm. Ah, uh, okay. And now he's called up some sort of spectral blade, which moves quickly, and uh, that's quite annoying. Maybe if I try and kill him first, all his things will disappear. Come back, come back, Goblin! Ah! Still die! Ah! There, got him. I've got another ring! How delightful. I already got two rings. I only wear two rings at once. Hmm, okay. Oh, this is the wrong stairs, isn't it? Yes, it's the wrong stairs. Right, time to heal up a bit and then mosey on out of this level. Oh, and I got a potion there <laughs> from something else. Okay. Uh, let's test out that potion. It's invisibility. Okay. All right, invisibility. Let's go invisible on to the next level. This is the last decent amount of time. Um, bing! All right. So. Miss? Mi oh, I'm missing all the time. All right, run away. I need to get into a good tactical position because it splits whenever it's hit, so I need to be in a tight corridor like this. Yes. There we go. Alright. I'm not invisible anymore. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Can I sneak up on him? Yes, I can. Got another potion. Ooh. Pretty lava. Uh, maybe a bit too kind of strong on the eyes, actually, but... Oh. Eel. Eel slips silently through the subterranean lake, waiting for unsuspecting prey, me, to set foot in its dark waters. Is it dark? Okay. Hit the, oh, it's run away. It's shot. Where's it? Ah, this is. Stop that, eel. You're being mean. Now I'm hurt. Okay, I need to look out for one of those. Ah, okay, yeah handy. Need to look out for one of these plants is what I was going to say. 
very kind of the dungeon to grow these useful plants for wandering adventurers. Okay. I do like how the plants work. They're kind of you're using the environment rather than just relying on items. So I'm not seeing like a healing potion type thing yet. Um, but yeah, a lot of rogue. Okay, how do I get in here? Uh, search around. There's a search key. There we go. Get him. Um, yeah, a lot of rogues rely on healing potions and so you just kind of stockpile up. Um, forcing it to be just in these kind of rare circumstances where you find them and also make them, making them part of the environment, making them have an area of effect and stuff. It, uh, it's a lot more interesting if you're in a combat situation than just a, a simple using an item in your pack uh, and that just does exactly what you want without any tactical considerations. It's just 100% effective. Uh, oh, so that potion was a potion of strength. I've got another one. What does it do? It gives me more strength, which is good. Oh, if I drink the other one, now I'm at strength 14. My sword's at strength 14, so I, I am better with it. So, oh, I drank a potion of levitation, so now I can levitate. I can just float across the water. Not care of the eels. What's this guy? Uh, okay, I don't know what he is anymore. I'm hallucinating. And the walls are singing to me, apparently. Um, I don't know what that was. Okay, well, everything's very nice and colourful. Hopefully this wears off. Alright. Well, there's nothing around to threaten me, so it's not really an I issue. It's, it's faded away. It didn't last too long. Okay. Time to go down to level 5. What's that? An alarm trap. Ooh, alarming. I like being able to see through walls. This would be very useful in real life. Could just have windows, I suppose. Okay, lots more lava. It's a fire trap. What's well, next to lava? How bad can it be? What's this? Wand of negation. Uh, anti magic. Strip creatures of magical traits, including flight. Blah. Okay. Creatures animated purely by magic will die. Oh, that sounds great. Okay. What's around here? Oh, here's one of those goblin conjurers, but he's at a dead end, so you won't get away from me this time. You do seem to want to just stay there waiting for me to come first though. You crafty little... Oh, there's another guy. There we go. Got you both. Mm. The AIs have some interesting behaviours where they stick around corners and they won't always move directly into you and let you get the first hit. Sneaky buggers. Okay. Away we go. Dum, dum, dum. Get some gold, kill some rats. I'm an adventurer! Ooh, what's this? An ogre. An enormous club that she can swing with incredible force. Um, so, uh, hits for 27% of my current health can hit me, kill me in three hits. Well, let's run away then! Um, I don't think I have anything to deal with that. Throw a potion of incineration at it. Don't know what these scrolls do. Don't think the negation does anything against it. Mm, yeah, let's, let's avoid it for now. Oh, eels, eels. Monkey eels. Run away from the eels. Alright, nothing. 
something else around here. Continue on with our adventures. Oh, here's a little item. Okay. Oh, familiar enough with my ring of clairvoyance. It's just plus one, so that's the same as it's been acting. All right. Depth six. What madness awaits us, jellies! Lots and lots of lava. This is yes. Am I in a volcano? Is is that the setting? It's, oh, what was that? Uh, I'll look at it later. An acid mound. The acid mound squelches softly across the ground, leaving a trail of acidic goo in its path. Does that mean it, it does things to the ground? The acid mound corrodes armor when it hits, and corrodes weapons when hit. Uh, I hate corroding creatures. Uh, okay, let's run away from the acid mound then. Uh, it's kind of a problem when there's all these other creatures involved. No, keep away. Ah, it hit me! Uh, my leather armor weakens. So minus one leather armor. <laughs> Lovely. Um, oh. Ah, uh, oh no. I need to get through. I can't attack it because it will hurt my weapon. Alright, I'm just going to have to accept my armor is... is ruined here. I'm mean, going armor zero. Ugh. Um, run away! Uh, okay, okay, okay. Let's get away from that pack and then throw darts at it till it dies. <sighs> and now I have minus 12 leather armor. That's, that's a bad number. This is not Thacko Dungeon Dragon style numbers. Low negative numbers are really, really bad. Alright, so we'll put on different armor. Ah. So I was thinking nothing could be worse than the leather armor. This minus 12, but I'll just put on this sprint mail and it's it's a bit too big for me anyway. Uh, but it's just constricted around me painfully, which means it's cursed. All right, well, I'm sure we'll find a way to deal with that. Hmm. Oh, more armor. Oh, uh, they're on the other side of the wall. That's fine. Get rid of that. Oh, I accidentally picked it up again. Stop the... Ah, okay, he just stepped on a trap. Um, run away. That's okay. Hmm. Come on, come on, come on. Alright. I do like how it kind of fades and stuff. It's got a. The gas expanding has a kind of natural physics y feel to it. So you can predict it reasonably well. Um, you can try and make use of it tactically by uh, standing where the gas won't be, but forcing enemies to be stuck in. There should be a passenger. Forcing enemies to be stuck in the cloud once you beat up on them. Ah, there's the stairs down. There must be some other way around here. Uh, statue. Cracks begin snaking across the marble surface of the statue. That sounds ominous. Statue. Oh, it's an ogre. Uh, I avoided one of these before because it looked like it would kill me dead. Now I'm in an even weaker position. I'm wearing some cursed armor thing. And, uh, yes, that's right. Burn! So I just threw a potion of incineration at it. Um, oh, no, 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 not the goblins, not the goblins. Uh, can we lure them over the trap, can we? Yes, we can. All right. So now they're getting hit by the caustic gas. And you see the ogre's health gone down quite a bit already. See, I'm being smart. This is this is the way to do things. Be smart and oh, crap. You 
what's going on here? You hit the ogre. Flames suddenly explode out of your splint mail. The ogre catches fire. You catch fire. Your splint mail must be a splint mail of immolation. Immolation is not a good word. The ogre batters you. Um. Oh dear. I'm on fire. I'm being battered by an ogre. I'm being battered and fried at once. Great. Uh, my splint mail, which was cursed, also has glowing runes on it of immolation. 10% of the time that absorbs a blow, it will explode in flames. Oh dear God. Uh, so now I'm in a burning field with a flaming armor being hit on by an ogre who is actually almost dying. So let's run away. Yep, he's dead. Goblin catches fire. Okay, okay, this isn't so bad. Uh, let's try and run away from the flames. No, I'm on fire, so I can't run away from the flames. Ah! Uh, well, let's get this stupid flaming armor off. Right. I just tried reading a scroll. A scroll protect armor. And ah, perfect. Okay, let's take off that armor then. Um. Uh, right. Just enchanted my ring of regeneration. Oh, it doesn't need to come off yet. Um, maybe that will. I'm on very low health, so maybe that will help me. Um, I don't know if any of these other scrolls will help me. Uh, maybe teleportation or something if I get it. Uh, scroll remove curse. No, it's, it's too late for that. Um, I don't know if anything else is going to work here. No. No, that's. No. That is death. <sighs> well. The real problem here was that earlier on in the game I was offered a staff of a firebolt and I chose to take the sword instead. And the sword, I'm not saying it's a bad sword, but it's not a great sword. The staff of firebolt in particular would have helped me with the ogre, would have helped me with the, the acid mount that ruined my armor earlier, and would have not led to me being in this situation where I'm having to don an unknown armor. So it's one of those examples of not only did I perhaps choose badly in the circumstance, but in fact, you know, I didn't make sure I had the right toolkit in my hand to deal with this emergency. And that was my first game of Brogue, and it was very exciting, and I ended up on Flaming dying, and it was, oh, it was very good, it was very good, very good. Um, I do suggest if you haven't played the game, go and have a go. Um, I'll try and do some more videos in the future of showing me doing better than I did in this video. Um, you can download Brogue from uh, if you search Brogue, Rogue Like, I'll include it, a link in the the video description as well. Well, thank you very much for watching me painfully explore the mechanics of Brogue. I uh, hope you'll join me again in future. Also, check out our episode of Rogue Like Radio on Brogue, which is going to be released imminently uh, on roguelikeradio.com. Thank you very much, and goodbye.